you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Member of Parliament, for this beautiful constituency. I will quickly say, Assalamu alaikum. Ram Nam Satya He. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I bring greetings to this crowd as we welcome our Prime Minister, our Chairman, our distinguished members of the head table, our beautiful audience. I want to say to Kamala, Oh Lord, you're in trouble. Oh Lord, if you see people here tonight. Trinidad and Tobago. I come knowing the PM has to speak to get straight to the point. First of all, this crowd, in my time in politics, I have never seen a crowd like this in a local government election. The last time I saw a crowd like this, it was in the heat of the general election of 2015, and I am astounded. People like to make up numbers, but to the viewing public and the listening public, I tell you tonight, this is a mammoth crowd. So let's get to some mammoth issues. Let's get right down to the chase. Because we're not talking to ourselves. We're not talking to the PNM alone. We are talking to a country in a local government election, which has on the one hand, the UNC offering itself, and on the other hand, the PNM offering itself. And for all the will in the world, we must focus on the reality of our country. We say that we're getting it done. We say that we're carving a new vision for a new country. And you, the people of Trinidad and Tobago, have to decide what version of Trinidad and Tobago you want born and continued for us. On the one hand, we have the UNC who tells you and their campaign slogan is quite simple. Kamala Passat Bissessa puts it quite simply and capably, who the hell cares? And on the PNM side, we come to you. We tell you quickly, okay, things were rough. Okay, we lost 96% of the revenue. Okay, we paid five to six billion dollars in back pay. Okay. We took the job, but tonight you heard Rohan Sinanan. You heard Rohan Sinanan tell you about thousands of lots in development. You heard him tell you about cutting down the cost of construction by hundreds of millions of dollars. You heard him speak about improving the lives of citizens because every road that is built means the land value next to the road goes up. Every hour you save in traffic is an hour of productivity you gain. Every hour you save on the road is an hour extra for your child to sleep before they go to school or when they come back home. And the UNC wants you to believe that this country is better off under them. And we say to you tonight, from my perspective as Attorney General, let's talk law and order because we're concerned about safety tonight when this massive crowd heads home you will be faced with how you get home whether you get home how you feel while you're on your way there and how you're gonna feel tomorrow morning so in our country we saw a prime minister with the courage to take a UNC Minister of National Security, promote him as the candidate for the Commissioner of Police, watch him come and work with a PNM government, a PNM Attorney General, a PNM 
head of the Security Council in the person of the Prime Minister, a PNM Minister of National Security, and that Commissioner of Police has witnessed today alone arrest for somebody who is assisting the police now in a bombing incident, a device explosive that went off today. That Commissioner of Police re-established a unit called the Special Operation Response Team, SORT, intended to replace the Special Anti-Crime Unit of Trinidad and Tobago that Anan Ram Logan and Kamla Passad Bicesa threw out. And I ask you tonight, Trinidad and Tobago, do you feel safer with Commissioner Griffith today than you felt before? And if you feel safer with Commissioner Griffith, who put him there? And if you feel safer with that, knowing that the Commissioner is doing a good job, I ask you, do you want the government to do its part? And if you want us to do the part, let's talk two things tonight. Let's talk about how we get people to face justice. You get people to face justice by getting a commissioner of police, putting him to stop the, the discipline issues falling apart in the police service, getting the police out to work, getting them to arrest people on the road, bringing them before the courts. But ladies and gentlemen, what is the point of arresting people if you don't have a fighting chance to keep some of them off the streets. And you all heard about something called the right to bail. Our constitution says that you have a right to bail, not to be deprived of bail unless there is a just cause. What does that mean? You go before a court, the magistrate who you appear before considers, are you a risk to society? The magistrate must look at the law. The parliament makes the law. The constitution says that the parliament makes law for the peace, order, and good governance. And we, your government, went to the parliament in 2016 to save the bail law. Because the UNC and the PNM got together in 2011. We said, let us pass bail amendments let us restrict the right to bail for 120 days or longer for serious matters like anti-gang legislation, kidnapping for ransom, firearm activities. And for the full time that the UNC was in office, that law stood on the books of Trinidad and Tobago. That law stood there. We knew there was a risk of legal challenge on the constitutionality of it. But we as responsible people said we would put it there. 2016 comes, the law has a sunset clause, and the UNC goes to the parliament and says no to the bail legislation. They did that after Anan Ram Logan and Gerald Ramdeen went to the court to challenge the law that the UNC passed and put into place. And we have recently returned to the parliament and we say that the parliament has the right to tell the judiciary what to consider. We put in a bail law that says that the court will always have the responsibility to consider bail, but we tell the parliament and therefore the country if you have an automatic weapon of war, if you have a bomb, a grenade, a missile, if you are trafficking in firearms, you ought to be one of those people who has to explain yourself to the court to show why you should get bail. The UNC has come to us to say they want to make sure that only if a man get catched twice doing that, he should be denied bail. Let me explain that to you. The UNC says to Trinidad and Tobago, 
Don't worry. He's a good boy. You catch him with an automatic firearm that could shoot 50 bullets in seconds, murder a whole crowd of people. You catch him with a bomb or a grenade, let him go. Let him come back the next time he get catch, and then we go treat with him. Trinidad and Tobago, I ask you tonight, do you consider that people with weapons of war should be walking free in this country? Do you agree with Kamala Passad Bissessa, senior counsel, that people should have two chances to explain themselves? Well, your leader of the opposition did not even bother to come to Parliament on Wednesday to turn up to face the music. And therefore, we paused the bill so that we will allow her to collect herself, sober up herself, turn up in the Parliament and face the music. And I have raised that to you because that's an issue in local government. In local government, our councillors will be equipped with municipal police. 100 per corporation, per municipality, 1,400 policemen on the streets. If you choose Kamala Passar Bissessa, your point is bail for criminals, no to tax law, no to explain your wealth, no to anti-gang law, and yes to criminality. And if you choose the PNM, you are saying to Trinidad and Tobago, let law enforcement do its job protected by the laws of Trinidad and Tobago. How do you ask a policeman to be full of moral righteousness and to know that his country is standing behind him if you can't equip him with the laws to do his job? And while we're on that point, what is the point of wasting the police time? You see, you can't get justice if you're busy wasting time. You have in the magistrate's court the responsibility to do 95% of the laws in Trinidad. 95% of justice is in the magistrate's court. You have 43 magistrates sitting in 12 courts dealing with 146,000 cases a year and they're busy. How do they treat with a rape victim? How do they treat with a firearm matter? How do they treat with fraud? If they're busy spending all the time dealing with 104,000 motor vehicle cases. Common sense tells you, put Rohan Sinanan to do the job. Because between Rohan Sinanan, Faris al Rawi, Keith Rowley, and the cabinet of Trinidad and Tobago, we digitized the licensing division. We amended the laws to deal with road traffic. And as today the cabinet passed the final electronic payment methods, we will take out 104,000 cases from the court. 146 minus 104,000 cases, 146,000 minus 104,000 leaves you with 42,000 cases. If you take out the preliminary inquiries from that, you take out another 26,000 cases. That means no 20 years in the magistrate's court waiting for the Piaco Airport inquiry to finish to decide if a case should go to the high court. You're left with 16,000 cases. 8,000 of those cases are for possession of marijuana. Eight thousand of those cases are spent being analyzed by the forensics department to see if it's a plant-like substance. Not everybody lucky, like some people, to have marijuana found in the premises for it to be a case that disappears. Not everybody lucky like that. And we say to Trinidad and Tobago, and this should matter to you, that we propose to remove marijuana as a dangerous drug. If you have possession, we say if you have under 30 grams, don't worry with that, 
Mr. Policeman. Let me tell you what 30 grams is. 30 grams is three Dumaurier packs full of marijuana. That's what 30 grams is. Why did we choose that number? We chose that number because if you take 8,000 cases away, you free up 86% of the forensic time, the rape victim finds dignity because the magistrate could deal with that matter. The forensics could analyze the DNA. Today we saw the Trinidad and Tobago police arrest someone for an alleged rape and buggery of a child. Let me repeat that. Today we saw the Trinidad and Tobago police arrest someone for an alleged rape and buggery of a child who was supposedly found bound. If we leave marijuana in the system, if we leave motor vehicle and road traffic in the system, if we leave preliminary inquiries in the system, that case will take 20 years to get done. What is the justice for the victim or even the accused? Suppose the accused was framed. What is the justice to Trinidad and Tobago in keeping the system the way it is? I ask you to understand that when you vote for local government change and local government reform, you are dealing with a political party called the PNM that is coming to you with real ideas, with real solutions, with real consequences. And the consequences is to the hearts and minds and souls of the people of this country. This is not a matter of making Kamla happy so weed could be smoked. This is not a matter of encouraging slackness. This is a matter of real justice on time. And we say to you, I can give a count tonight as Attorney General. I run three ministries. Attorney General, Legal Affairs, and I inherited the Ministry of Justice and absorbed them. Anan Ram Logan, Ministers of Justice and Ministers of Legal Affairs in the UNC, ran those ministries for $4.1 billion. I have run all three of them for $1 billion. Four to one. Where you can actually see a plan. And part of that plan includes following the money. And we follow the money by digitizing the society, cleaning up the registry, making sure the courts have the information, equipping the police with the information in the right position. And that is why we have people before the courts. Be they at licensing division, in the army, in the police, or be they past members of parliament or sitting senators who had to resign, that is causing justice on the basis of following the money. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very conscious of time and I know the prime minister has to speak. So I will put it in conclusion this way. Sangre Grande and Trinidad and Tobago, do you want who the hell cares? Do you want Cambridge Analytica never happened? Do you know about somebody called Rove? Rove is an American strategist. The man's name is a fella called, the Prime Minister introduced me to this, the man's name is called Carl Rove. R-O-V-E. Karl Rove, strategy number three, says, accuse your opponent of your own weaknesses or just simply tell the opposite of what is true. Let me tell you what Karl Rove UNC style is. They know Rohan Sinanan is an honest man, so they say he thief a bridge. They know Rohan Sinanan 
is an honest man. So they say he's so stupid, he take a river, pass it through his land, right down the middle, to devalue the land, to take all the flood water so he can make money. They say Keith Rowley guilty of the worst sins under God's earth. Well, we know all of that is lie because Dr. Rowley put the money in his pocket from defamation. First leader of the opposition in the Commonwealth to be thrown out by a government on the basis of lies. They bring Vanilla Allen Toppin to tell the most disgusting lies that a parliament has ever heard. And what I warn you about, ladies and gentlemen, the UNC's strategy to the voting public is quite simple. If you're honest, say you're a thief. If you're hardworking, say you're lazy. If you're a decent man, say you're a crook. If you're honest with your wife, say you're horn in. And what the UNC says is that Rodney Charles is good looking. Anan Ram Logan was the best attorney general they ever had. That is what the UNC puts out on offer. And if you believe Rodney Charles is a good looking man, God bless you, they have a cure for cataract, it's called surgery. And if you believe Anand Ram Logan was an honest man, that's up to you. Some people may say otherwise. But what I can tell you, your eight councillors, your chairman, your political leader, your prime minister, your minister of works, and Sangri Grandi, all of you as Trinidad and Tobago know, the PNM is the choice for this country. <laughs> On December 2nd, I ask you to do what you have to do. Wake up early in the morning. Say your prayers. Put God in your thoughts. Understand that you don't win an election by staying home. Every man and woman pick 10 people extra and take them to the polls. Make sure your vote is cast. Return in an orderly fashion and descend in your numbers to celebrate the victory that the PNM will bring because we know that the PNM shall prevail. Thank you, ladies what and gentlemen.